here we go. Oh, we're here. <laughs> yes, we're all staring, you know, with in anticipation at the at the computer for the counter to come on that we're recording. Hi, everybody. Hello. Good morning. You you are you are all sunshiny and orange today. I am <laughs> extremely <laughs> orange. That is very true. It is so gray out, and I end up wearing I gray wore, today. And you have a little gray. Well, you have a little orange on. Too. I wore a little orange. Oh, damn. Do I? Oh, I have a I have a pink bra on. Yep. <laughs> there we go. We got some color in the room. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is it's a it's a shirt um, that was um, made um, promoting this plane called an XT. What was it? An XT seven fifty two. It's a World War II plane. Oh yeah. And um, this the Discovery Channel did a documentary of the guys that restored this thing, and um, the British pilot was there that flies it. Oh cool. And oh. it was just the whole thing was just really amazing. And um, it I can't remember now. It's been like two years. Um, and this and you'll notice the sweatshirt hasn't faded. It's mm. that orange. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it was just one of those cool things. One of our friends said, do you guys want to go do this? And we're like, why not? And it turned out to be Uber super fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Those are mm -hmm. nice events. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, you know, out in a field in Wisconsin. Well, that's what, when I was, uh, there's, I don't know. I think there's just something, uh, you know, about World War II that obviously holds, you know, our country's imagination. When I uh, was in Cape Coral, I was in an antique store. I bought another family's photo album yeah hmm. Hmm. i mean it was from 1943 to 1948 it was cool uh, the gentleman was a dentist in the army and it's it's there and it's not even my family but i couldn't leave it in the antique shop that's amazing i don't you know the, the pictures were amazing i'm a, you know american history sort of buff anyway but it is fascinating that how we're just drawn to that for sure and you know you know 80 years ago now and it's just fascinating well the greatest generation and you know it's funny you cannot turn on satellite or cable without finding a world war ii show about that era in some facet yeah at, at any given time would you agree well, yeah, yeah it's our last really great victory we've been floundering a little <laughs> bit since yeah. you know trying to find our way well and i think the innovation in that was you know since there was this race like my mm -hmm. husband loves to watch like the stuff on the tank race Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Sure. So I think there is some fascination that you're just not going to find. Who cares about drones? You know, it's just not. It's not sexy. No. 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 Mm -mm. Hey, guys. Um, mm -hmm. Guess what? We have sponsors. And um, I'm super excited. We're going to open the show uh, letting everybody know that Audible is uh, on board with the Alive and Social Network and here also on the Great Northern Sex Cast. And we want you guys to know that you are able to download a free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash social. So again, it's audibletrial.com forward slash social. And there's over 180,000 titles to choose from. You should be able to find something. Oh, yeah. I'm and thinking. some good erotica. Yeah. That would be fun, too, mm -hmm. to get some, some good erotica. Apparently, that is like the biggest um, genre of um, Audible. Okay. Is the erotica books because yeah. you, you don't have to, you know, hide your bookcase? I guess it's easier to hide it in your, your well, yeah. Your I mean, phone that's list. why I mean, that's why ebooks in general like boomed, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is because of the uh, because of ebooks, people don't have to know what you're reading. But I guess the audible thing, erotica is like mm -hmm. you know, like truckers really like to listen to erotica. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Although I would think that that could be quite distracting. <laughs> well, then they pull into the truck stop and they find themselves a lizard, right? Right. <laughs> what she said. Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, yes. So, hey, it's St. Pat's week. It's coming yeah. up on Thursday. Any plans? Uh, not really. No. no, no. I think I have. I, it was never a big thing for me because I just. With the first name of Colleen, it was like I went away from it because the only thing, like I mentioned this before, the only thing Irish about me is my name. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I also, I you know, I spent 20 years working Renaissance Festival, so I've heard enough Irish music for a dozen lifetimes. Yeah. <laughs> I live in St. Paul. I live, I live, you know, I could walk to downtown St. Paul, but... I it's know. it's on a thir what Thursday? Yeah, Thursday yeah. night. It's fun. I mean, there, there, there will have to be corned beef. See, I'm I'm much more interested in the food. In the food, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I do like corned beef. <laughs> interested in the food. Yeah, yeah. the husband know. doesn't like corned beef. I've I've made it a couple oh. times, and he's like, I don't really like this. So, oh, I can't eat it all by myself. <laughs> I know. That would take like a, a month, or you could freeze it. Yeah, yeah. that'd be kind of mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I I always have to do a little something. My favorite though is go to go to Chicago. 
Mm. Chicago is absolutely. Yeah. I, I would like Turn to the see. River green the, and... I have to admit, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind taking a peek at a green. You know, the fact that they have to dump all this stuff mm -hmm. in there to make it turn green. And everybody mm -hmm. gets into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hilarious. Every, if you're gonna Especially do it. if it's nice. You know, you have to remember it's like the beginning of spring. So Chicago's a lot like us. So they've been cooped up all winter. And mm -hmm. if it's a nice day, I'm sure it's just super fun. Oh, no, it is fun. I, I did it three <clears> years in a row. Um, and it's it's really something good to do. Well, we can't really move forward and act like we are informed citizens without noting that we're in the middle of another Super Tuesday. Oh, God. Thank goodness. Uh. It is uh, uh, it is it is interesting because regardless of what happens in November, we're going to have four years of people dissecting this past year. I know. Oh, my God. I'm I'm just I'm I'm ready for it to be over. Mm -hmm. It's my house is way too political, and I'm just I'm so done. Do you guys disagree? No. Oh, okay. But my husband thinks I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and that can be a problem. Yeah. Like he's the only I'm the only one he talks to. So like this is what he's passionate about. So if he's not, you know, like he Facebooks, he's always in online conversations. But like actual physical conversations, I'm in. I'm the sounding board, and I'm like. Is there anything else we could talk about? <laughs> I know. It's anything? Been, it's been uh, uh, quite uh, frustrating. And, you know, to, to watch the news or see what's going through there. Um, I've probably done uh, a lot of... I'm not unfriending, but there are just some folks that are just... And I don't care what side they're on, that just are posting way way too much yeah. mm. <laughs> and even if some of it i agree with or i think is funny or you know or i just like oh come on uh, bring back the cats yeah. i need more uh, cats yeah more more, more cats yeah. well i think i think some of it is like they post this stuff and it's like man you don't even know who like you uh, you know like like family like okay i find that really offensive mm-hmm you you are hurting my feelings because of what you're saying you know and and your family like you you're just posting something that you you know it's like so now i know that you don't like me mm -hmm. or what i believe or something like that mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean my i mean my mom's an immigrant so anything that's anti-immigrant really bugs me to no end and it's like to have family members like start you know, dissing on immigrants i'm like <laughs> What are you doing? Mm. Where's your mom from? She's from, she was born in Hungary, lived in Germany. And they came over um, in, the, in 50, okay. 1950. We're going to mm -hmm. go to the German corner of the world and talk about Austria coming up here in the Great yeah. Northern <laughs> Sex Cast in just a few minutes here. Well, on a one political note that I think we can all get off on, mm -hmm. haha, is um, do you guys remember, if you didn't see it live, um, the clips ran ad nauseum for days after one of the recent Republican debates and Donald Trump talked about is the size his of hands. his hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, this was bound to happen, and I'm glad it has. Uh, the Erotic Heritage Museum in Las Vegas uh, would like to do a mold and put <laughs> uh, a Trump on display. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so does uh, Pipe Dream. Pipe yeah, Pipe Perfect. but, Pipe but an offer that's too. assuming that he's telling the truth, mm -hmm. right? I think they're trying to prove it. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you get the mold doesn't lie, Liz? I know, mm -hmm. but he is not known for his truth saying. <laughs> so I'm sure it's an exaggeration like everything else. I mean, he is on the third wife. I know, I know. <laughs> All right? Yeah. If, if, yes. Oh, I, I know, I know. Yes. Isn't that hysterical? Yes. I mean, that is kind of funny. <laughs> and um, by the way, they would call it a sex of, sex of it. Exhibit, yeah, instead mm -hmm. of an exhibit of sex of it, mm -hmm. it's hard to say, it's harder than I thought. Yeah, uh, yeah, you think that would be easier to say, <laughs> I know, right? But then you have to back up and go, Oh, just uh, okay, mm -hmm. hey, um, this I just came aware of this this morning. Um, I'm gonna admit it. I mean, and Megan and I discuss our strange, uh, you know, affinities for gaming and you know, superheroes, whatever they may be. I am addicted to a particular game on my iPad, I'll own that, and um. <clears throat> I was watching an ad today, and it was an ad for a virtual adult coloring book. Okay, hmm. so it's got the patterns. Oh, it's like no. on your phone or your iPad, and you tap the color, and you yeah. tap where you want it to go. I'm like, that's not coloring. I, well, and I mean, the whole that, adult that, coloring thing is cool, and mm -hmm. you get why that's popular. But this, hello, no, no. I mean, that's that's a. I mean, there are, there were apps like that for my daughter when she was little, and it kept them busy in the car. Yeah, it's not but, coloring, but no. it's not. <laughs> 
Uh, lost it's not on coloring. Lost no, because you're always going to be in the lines. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not coloring. Yeah, and it. Does, I mean, and if if there's no challenge to trying to stay in the lines, it's like I don't know. But you're, if you're in the car, it's harder to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I don't know. No, that, that that that's for toddlers that are lear learning about yeah. shapes and colors and 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 different things. That is that is not for grown ass adults. Thank you. No. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I think it, it bears mentioning before we even get into our new segment here on the Great Northern Sex Cast that Florida has been a grave disappointment of late. Mm. I, am, yeah. I haven't found anything. No, no. There's not too much going on in, in Florida. It's you know, very frustrating. It's too I much know. politics. Well, I'm mm -hmm. thinking they're either, yeah, they're busy with the campaigns mm -hmm. and all the spring training crap that's yeah. going on is all I can think of. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Texas throws down this week. Ah. So we've got some stuff coming out of Texas um, mm -hmm. coming Across up. Well, there. South by Southwest is happening right now. So. Oh, yeah. Well, and ironically, none of this has to do with that, which <laughs> that's such a great opportunity for a hotbed of stories for us. Yeah. Um, but, oh, you know. Well, it's still, it's, you know, maybe next week it's still going on. Yeah. It's early. Mm -hmm. It's early. It hasn't hit the wires yet but i did find one um which we got a um and megan's got the links to everything that we're going to talk about today but this i thought was pretty damn funny new hampshire um a guy dressed as captain america and it, there's another captain america in the news today too um along with a gal dressed as wonder woman um had to get rescued on a new hampshire highway because their car broke down <laughs> And the trooper came to their rescue. And I just love the story. And they, I mean, the mm. picture of them, they look awesome. Right. Well, they were headed to entertain at a children's party. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the cop said, okay, let's get you to your gig. And so not only did the superheroes come to the kitty party, oh, they show in up a in a cop, cop car. car. Oh, oh the kids. I mean, this amped, oh. amped up the cool factor oh. like you would not believe. So it was all this little happy, happy story. I and love stuff like that. Yeah. I know. Isn't that cute? I know that everything has to be a drunk person doing in a parking lot. I love there, we the have that later. <laughs> that is coming up later in the show there but, was yeah. a there was a commercial where it was it was like something about how parents are planning these lame birthday parties well you need to kiss it up mm -hmm. and like literally the band kiss in their full makeup outfit like mm -hmm. crash this little girl's birthday party like oh step God. on her cake <gasps> and then they have this like is she rock... crying no they're having this rock party and she's just like uh. she's like yeah <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> no I, I i've had some, you know reasonable birthday parties for my daughter and then some not so reasonable ones when you take everyone to the science museum but sometimes it's just easier to just in you know when she was younger invite the whole class <laughs> go to the zoo be done with it yeah yeah <laughs> if you can't you know that's quite a that's quite an undertaking though how many people did you have on assist for something like that most of the, when they were young enough, most of the parents stick around. Yeah, they and do. I, and I always say siblings can come too. It's no big deal, and they go to the zoo, and it's you know it's fine. Or there's a, uh, you know, if you're at the science museum, then they you know they go look at the music, you know, the stuff while the kids are do you know making their little um, fake blood or uh, or they uh, give you like a, a dry room. ice and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Okay, well, in other Captain America happenings in the last mm -hmm. week, um, this one a guy robbed a like a beauty supply store, like an Ulta, I think it was mm -hmm. here. They've got security. This is actually out of Texas, Plano, Texas. In fact, we've got three stories out of Texas. Um, so they've got security footage. Listen to how the, the um, investigators describe the suspects. <laughs> Suspect number one, unknown male, black hooded sweatshirt with yellow lettering, black pants, and black gloves. Suspect number two, unknown male, Captain America hooded sweatshirt, <laughs> camo cap, and red gloves. Mm -hmm. The wanted men <laughs> fled in a silver four-door SUV, possibly a Dodge Durango or Chrysler has. <laughs> Aspen, and they're asking for Crime Stoppers help. You know, to nice. call crime. So it wasn't the Captain America costume; it was just a sweatshirt with the. No, on I saw it. the picture. He looks oh. like his. Yeah, no, it really kind it's, of. It's it, one of those high-end um, uh, hoodies. You know that you know all the design. Oh and yeah, everything. it had all the stuff. I mean, it looked pretty convincing, and he couldn't tell what he looked like. Yeah, I, I would think that you would choose something less noticeable if you're going down the street later getting a cup of coffee or something like what about a zombie or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know I'm, that's i me. i was in my backyard doing gardening and a couple of dudes were walking out of the alley with like a, a mac yeah and like bags yep. and then they went and stashed them in like the, the other neighbors like um bushes and i was like huh that doesn't seem 
right. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't, they were just wearing their like mm-hmm. regular clothes, you know? Yeah. No, you, I, I think, <clears throat> uh, you know, a less assuming co- uh, costume would help. You know, it's weird. The next story, I, we were going to talk about the pole dancing competition that's coming up because Liz, you're here and I know that you deal with Miss Angie and she's been a guest on her show and she's going to be back. Um, let's go ahead and have you give us an update on that before we talk about the next story. Well, it's happening on April 2nd, okay. which is in... Okay, two and a half two, weeks, yeah. Yeah. something like mm-hmm. that. Um, and it is going on all day. I think it starts at like 3 and goes till 11. We are going to have a table set up probably not till 6, 7, because they do, I think they do some younger competition okay. mm-hmm. during the day. So we're kind of, I'm not going to mm-hmm. have anything set up for that because it's kind of like two different, it seems like it's two different events. Like they have more... A G rated and then Yeah, yeah. And then so um and there'll be a bunch of different vendors and cocktails and it'll be fun. You know, yeah. watch watch people, you know, I mean I've seen some pole performances, not strip club, but actual like pole performances and they are amazing. They are. I mean, these women have crazy upper body strength and they can do crazy stuff and I th- hopefully they'll have some silk work which I love cuz that thing is like s- kind of scary cuz they drop. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean they might have some of that. So it's at um it's at oh, wow. God, no, okay, total brain fart. But so we're gonna link it. Around. We're gonna oh, it's it's uh, Muse? Muse. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. downtown Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah. And so it should be. It should be super fun. And you know, I could look for us. There'll be prizes. I mean, definitely, if you're looking for something to do on a Saturday night, that's different. And you know, go. I think it's just be yeah. fun. Well, and we'll get Miss Angie. Uh, I'm excited back about going. Here. Yeah. No, that sounds really. And fun. And I have to fly out at 10 a.m. the next morning. Where are you going? Vegas. Nice. Is that for a show? Yeah. Okay. To so buy like, lingerie. Oh, yeah. Ah. But I'm like, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> What's going? On? Hey, what is? Uh, uh, give it. Got any lingerie updates? Anything new, or, or will you know after the trip? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, we'll see. Out there, th- th- it'll be different this year. They always do a fashion show, but this year they're doing a sit-down dinner, and they're gonna have the the ladies walking around. Oh. So okay. everyone I talk to is like. That's interesting, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I mean, I get it because, like, I think a lot of the s- people want to use this time to like socialize with their clients. Mm-hmm. And at a, at the fashion show, you can't really talk. So I think they're going to use this as an opportunity to, you know. Well, let us know how that kind of shakes yeah, out. Yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, we'll see who cool. I sit next to. I think that's mm-hmm. that's going to be, you know, because I have more than one rep. You know, Mm -hmm. so who do I sit next to? Whoever comes up to you first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one already meant one already invited me to sit at her table. Okay. So yeah, well, come come back in after and and let us know how the show goes. Um, Before we leave the pole dancing uh, arena, I just want to let you guys know. And and I sent links, and there's the photographs from this are freaking cool. There's um, one in LA and one up in Toronto. These two different photographers that um, do underwater pole dancing shots. And um, it'd the be pa- way easier to do pole dancing underwater. Well, yes and no. <laughs> there are some challenges to it, not the least of which is holding your breath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Both for the photographer and the model. Yeah. And it's a really interesting article, but the pictures look awesome. Yeah. yeah. They're really, really pretty. So um, check that out. We'll put that up on the, the great. That was always show. my favorite on uh, America's Next Top Model. Mm-hmm. When they did the underwater shoot, oh, okay. you know, because you have to keep, you have to have your pretty face <laughs> underwater, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, yeah. you know, and, and when you get underwater, you're more like concerned about like breathing, yeah, not you know? dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not I, really I, like what your face <laughs> looks like. Yeah, so it's I, always it's always funny. I love that show. The first couple of years yeah. when it was really about modeling versus, and then almost every one of those shows turn into um, just the conflicts between the contestants versus someone yeah, actually learning something. Years. And so I stopped watching that. I stopped watching um, Project Runway, uh, Project Runway mm-hmm. and all that because it used to be about what it was about, you know, yeah. fashion or modeling, yeah. and not people, you know, and generally women being bitchy at each other or stereotypes yeah. of. Yeah. Designers being, and I'm like, oh, can you just? Really? Yeah, it was really good at first, you know. Yeah, you know what? I still am addicted to though is Undercover Boss. <laughs> I love that show. Did you, guys Did ever you watch see that? the spoof with Rilo Ken? No, is it hilarious? It is really, really funny because he pretends he's like a technician. Oh yeah, he's and he's like hanging jumpsuit. out in the 
in the lunchroom with the stormtroopers. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You really know, I think I did somewhere, at least a clip I of it. I showed it to my kid, and he doesn't understand. I mean, he doesn't really understand that Rilo Ken is also Adam Driver, who's just an actor. So he's mm-hmm. just like, I can't believe he's just like eating lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I love that show. I can't yeah. watch it without crying, though. Oh, um, well, uh, that's You know what point. I mean? At the end, yeah. you're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I love it. Um, although this one company, Mako, they just featured Mako last weekend. And this guy, I mean, some of them, it's really funny like some of them like cheese they don't give away hardly anything and other ones just like give away a ton i'm sure right. you know like chiquita bananas was like oh we bought you a new forklift oh gee thanks you know i mean it's for the i swear well, to god food there just really isn't a good markup on food i know mm-hmm. but still it was just kind of my, my carl and i were looking at each other going really mm-hmm. but um i make all this guy just threw down he's like an argentine um ceo huh. and two of the people that he freaking just gave the world to quit within six months oh Oh, oh! It was painful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to bring that up. Oh. Okay. So, um, this guy—I don't even know how to start this out. So, um, basically, a guy is in jail from uh, after being arrested naked and hanging off of a cliff by his <laughs> ankle. And I there's a picture. Okay, there is a picture, and he's kind of blurred out, but you can definitely see hanging by his foot. Okay, but like, how he like how is he hanging by his ankle? Like he, he, he got caught in a tree. Like a tree. A tree. Okay, oh yeah. Okay. okay, but how he got there is almost as good as what I just said. Okay, he barged into a woman's house in Pendleton, Oregon, and she was terrified because she, not only would that be terrifying to any of us, but she has muscular dystrophy. And so she can't really escape so well. He walks in, he goes, hi, honey. And she's like, oh my God, this is my day. I'm going to get raped. I'm going to get murdered, you know, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. And um, she said he had a great big old grin and she's yelling, get away from me, get away from me. You know, and then so all of a sudden he grabs her dog and takes it into one of the bedrooms for a few minutes. I'm very concerned. There's been no further mention in the story about what happened to the dog, <laughs> to the dog. or if the dog needed counseling. We don't know. <laughs> but then he reappeared. She's calling 911 while he's in there with her dog. So he goes running out into the backyard and basically. Is he nude this whole yes. time? Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm, I was I'm, assuming that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just clarifying. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm like, at what point did he, you know, you know, yeah, did he get did dressed he naked with, with the dog? dog? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He uh, tried to escape by climbing the fence and then fell down this very oh. steep thing and ended up hanging by his. So butt. she lived by on the on the edge of a ravine and he didn't know that. Yeah. Or did I, you know, oh. did he Jumped know he didn't fence. have pants? I mean, he sounds so, like he was high. He was. Yeah, I'm saying, is meth involved here? Something. something. Uh-huh. Um, they said, uh, how did they say it? Uh, he was in a state known as excited delirium that is sometimes triggered by drugs. Yeah. I love how, how circumspect they always are about this kind of stuff. They don't say the guy was a freaking stoner or he mm. was tripping. No, they never say that. No. Uh, other home invasion news. Uh, police in Tennessee um, saw a bur- burglar that uh, came in. Uh, he broke into a residence and told the homeowner he was there to save his wife, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, he was Is this just, her house? No. No. No, it's just somebody's house. And the robber, once police got there and apprehended him, insisted he was there to save Taylor Swift. And he had every right to search the residence because she may have been held there. Mm. Okay. You know, mm. I, you know, it, it, the delusions that folks have about complete strangers, especially. I mean, I, That's I, always I, sad, isn't imagine, it? Can you imagine? I mean, there's got to be probably, I mean, dozens, if not hundreds of people. I mean, that she, that, you know, that Taylor Swift or anyone else has to, like, dig oh, yeah. through the letters and the emails and the yeah. Facebook comments. I mean, Mary Lou Chia, Chia, she's not even that famous, and she couldn't work for, like, a year because of her stalker. That's terrifying. Yeah, and, and, and I just and, and, and then to have just you know random person get caught up in this. I mean, you know, yeah, you yeah. Be completely I know the startling. few radio shows we've done. The mm-hmm. people that go to those radio shows are little oh. off. Oh, I try broadcasting at the state fair. Yeah, I used to have to do that when I was on Cities and K Fan all the time. And uh, yeah, we got out of it when I was on when I was on K Talk. But um, the people that come and just stare at you for like hours yeah. is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you really want to have a good time, 
I could I could do I'll bring in a news segment and just put Carl's sister here. She um, was a manager at the downtown Minneapolis Macy's for years and years. She ran the whole second floor, mm-hmm. um, which is where the Skyway is. So she got the really fun crap. Right. But but she would also be on call when there would be major disturbances and the people that would come in and do stuff like the guy in the shoe department wearing nothing but socks, screaming that he was Britney Spears. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> seriously, and she got to witness this. Yeah. 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 No, no. Everyone always gives you know fantasy gifts. You know, like oh my God, there's going to be problems because you exist. I'm sorry. I'm retail just like anybody else. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I know I've mentioned this before, but when I worked at Donaldson's, I was told to monitor how long guys were in the men's room. Yeah. Really? And this was in, the, you know, this is when I was like 19 years old. So we're talking 30 years ago. So this is nothing new yeah. because there were folks having sex in the men's mm-hmm. room at Donaldson's at Ridgedale. Mm-hmm. Now you're telling me that the China department, you know, had no, you know, I'm, well, they're gonna find the <laughs> yeah. they're gonna find the bathroom that's unused, um, yeah. you know, which of yeah. course would be the bathroom in the China department, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was just in the, yeah, that's where they put the men's room, and I'm like, so people just go insane, you know, over the idea that you know, you know, fantasy gifts might be someplace, and this shit happens everywhere, anywhere. It has nothing to do with, with what, what I saw. sell. No. Yep, Zippo, nada, nothing. That is so funny. Um, still in Texas, Colleen, you came up with this one. Would you like to tell us about the truck? The eighteen wheeler on the highway in Texas. I don't think. No, no, oh, you I, don't remember no, that no, one. No, mine was the uh, mine was the uh, well, uh, we'll Peruvian get, pottery. We'll get to those. Did okay. I miss well, something? no, the I mean, Houston, you just sent me a link to this. It's hysterical. Oh, the Houston, a, a Houston area. Ago. Yeah, just a couple weeks, a couple days. I mean, um, a Houston area highway oh, was shut down oh, yes, okay. after a car accident, and which also featured a woman dancing naked on top of the eighteen wheeler. Now, the eighteen wheeler was involved in the accident. We don't know if the naked lady was or if she was just celebrating. <laughs> Yes. But again, blurry picture of like it. Like after hilarious. the accident, she yeah. hops on she, top. Yeah. Just naked woman, like decided now is the time to boogie on top of the roof of the eighteen wheeler's cab. That's I mean, not, been in an accident. That's been in an accident. Yeah. Okay. And and and, and I, that was the thing is it ran across my feed because my friends you know decide that yeah. I need to know about this. It's amazing what sure. my friends decide what I need right. to know about. Right. Helpful. And I'm just and I'm and I'm reading it and I'm like, but at no point does it really say why the ladies. I mean, naked. On the truck. Well, let's assume she was probably in the truck and was doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, like, really fun to be in an accident, you she, know? She was taken into custody, so I'm sure that, <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll find out more at some point. <laughs> yeah. um, also in Texas, you know how they're having all that flooding right now? Mm, and the rivers, yeah. and it's really... It's terrible. It's 20 inches in one day of rain? Oh. I can't even imagine. Yeah, I mean, and the pictures are, are horrifying. Have you guys ever ever witnessed a major flood at all? Um, the closest I ever got was spending about four or five hours trying to bail out our, my, uh, uh, our house, you know, in no. a, an electrical yeah. storm. So not really. Okay. But there was, I was here <laughs> actually as a child visiting Minnesota, there was a flood in Rochester in 1978. Um, it was major. I mean, it took mm-hmm. out blocks and blocks oh, and yeah. blocks. And, um, I, I remember sandbagging, um, on the lake we were staying at and then, um, going into town to see the depth. I've never seen anything quite like it. So I just, I, I'm water just, is the most destructive, uh, thing on, on, in nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. So they're going through that down in uh, Texas. Well, on this past weekend when, you know, things were happening down there, um, I have two questions here. First of all, what's the lady kayaking in this crap for? Not a good time to be out kayaking, but good thing for the dude that was naked clinging to a tree that she was because she saved him. Well, if, if, if that's your only boat that you all know. I mean, but she wasn't, this was a leisure trip. I, oh. She wasn't escaping. This was really strange. So it that was the, the San Jacinto That can be River. really dangerous. Yeah. I this mean, is the, the debris. I mean, yeah. you, know, the, you don't know what's in those, yeah. in the waters. Yeah. And, right. and then, the, and then and some the guy, disease. some guy died trying to get his stuff out of his house into his boat. Like he had a boat and he was trying to put stuff in the boat mm-hmm. and somehow the boat capsized and he died. Yeah, like, yeah, it's really dangerous. This was a team effort between two women, one woman who discovered him, and she's trying to talk to him, and then she motions to this other lady who was leisure kayaking by, (laughs) and she says, go get him. Uh, And um, finally, the kayaker goes up and says, if you want help, you're going to have to jump out of that tree. Finally, she coaxed him into her kayak. How'd you like a naked stranger Mm. popping in your kayak with you? Maybe he had, like, really baggy pants on, and they just got, like, swept away. <laughs> okay, what about the whitey tighties in the shirt? I'm just, I know what you're trying to do, Liz. I'm just <laughs> trying to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, but I, know, but I just, it's not working for me. Oh, he probably was like, oh my god, it's raining, I want to I want to dance in the rain. I mean, who hasn't done that? Naked, come on. Come um, on. Look, not maybe, by a raging river! <laughs> I'm pretty sure maybe when I was, like, you know, 
under two years old, I may have ran around in the backyard nude in the rain, but I'm I'm pretty sure that was been, it's been everything's that long. everything's way funner when you're when you're naked. <laughs> naked. Okay. Well, okay, yeah. I mean, okay. except cooking with grease. Yeah. Well, we've talked. About, I I just yeah. we we were talking about this earlier. We yeah. Posted a picture. I just I I. I I really I prefer being nude. I will just say that I really? this is not something. Yes, I don't really like clothes. I keep my house. I mean, I pay a fortune for heat because I keep my house at naked temperature. Okay, <laughs> okay. but I just don't want to do certain things in the nude. And yeah. one of them would be like cooking. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't really want to be cleaning in the nude either. No. I mean, there's certain things. Uh, fake cleaning. I'll, I'll do some fake cleaning. <laughs> Got okay. A yeah, and like feather duster. Let's fake cleaning. I'm not cleaning anything. But yeah, I don't I'll want to pretend be, I, to clean. I'm not gonna run toilet cleaning the vacuum out. chemicals nude. I mean, you know, I just... vacuum the same ten inches, you know, over and oh, over. Oh yeah, yeah, up and down, up and down, down the same down. path. Um, <laughs> but no, I just but but generally, but you know, if I'm if there are people nearby. I live in the city. There are windows. Yeah. You know, my neighbors are. Well, not you know, only that, you have a daughter that has a boyfriend. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not like. I, I have. <laughs> How I, much time I, are you spending naked these no, days? I, no, I have. I have uh, warned uh, occasionally if that uh, uh, if folks aren't sent home soon, I am going to come downstairs and uh, you know what I sleep in, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. I remember actually. That'll get those kids out. You just, Home. I just, I yeah, just sort of embarrassing your child is, you know, is yeah. important part of uh, of growing up. Yeah. Well, it's an important part of discipline. I mean, it's it's a hell of a, a stick to wield, so to speak. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, you know, I just had this weird flashback when you were talking about that. You know, um, when I was like, oh my god, seriously, like kindergarten or first grade. I had friend a friend who whose house I would visit and her parents were nudists. Oh, and I just remember really? that. Yeah, <laughs> I had forgotten all about. I they remember. would be nude yeah. when there were uh, non-family members in the house. Yep. Wow. That. That, that would not go over no. now today at all. <laughs> no, no, no. But I remember that. And, well, the second my mom discovered it when she came to pick me up and they answered the door. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> we weren't friends anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that you just are oh, not mean. Like, I have nothing. I mean, I, 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 I love the human body. In fact, the majority of the art in my house is, is nude, hu- is nudes, yeah. human body stuff like that. I had to work really hard to find non uh, male, like porn type images to find like equal opportunity nudity art. Yeah. 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 Thank God for the internet because I actually found a painter of really beautiful male nudes, but it was, it was a South African artist who was just, who was displaying in Paris. <laughs> but I found it online, and it was the first time I ever wired any money going, oh, God, I hope I get these yeah, paintings. Yeah. And they did, and they're beautiful. Really? Because, I, I mean, it's really easy to find really nice naked women. But, you know. Somebody but- posted a Facebook post that I read, I think, yesterday about this whole topic in Europe. They have <clears throat> they have out of nudity is legal in lots of places, right? Where And it's because in Europe, just because you're nude doesn't mean – you're gonna have sex yeah it's like not, they yeah. don't they don't but in america if you see someone nude it's because they're having sex yeah so like we are like really uncomfortable with nudity mm-hmm. you know yeah i i have a difficult time with it with the idea that, that the human body is there's something wrong with it yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it drives yeah. me crazy oh and yeah. this is long and it was something that it just is always i've never understood right. it this but is i long, think if we saw more naked people different I mean, if you think about it, the only naked people that we see besides ourselves are like Kim these Kardashian. skinny, <laughs> yeah, these skinny, you know, like women on TV. If we actually had like nude beaches where you'd take your kids and you'd see actual people, what they actually look like naked, I think our perspectives on our own bodies would completely change. I think you're right. I mean, we it, it's it's no secret that we in the U.S. are extremely uptight about that stuff. Which, let's go to Peru for a minute. Speaking of <laughs> art and nudity, this is pretty neat. I, I, no, once again, another friend found this, and, and it went across my uh, uh, social media sites. And it is ancient Andean, and I don't know how to pronounce this. I I'm think it's go with Moche. Moche civilization. It is explicit pottery that is thousands of years old. Of course, when the European invaders came over, they crushed a bunch of it because of, you know, the idea that, you know, nudity and sex was anything, you know, was was evil. But, I mean, this is thousands of years old. Peruvian pottery, and, I mean, there's, uh, and there's a, and 
there's a lot of different ways sex is happening here. Yeah. And people disagree because it doesn't show a lot of penis vagina sex. Does that mean that women are empowered? But it does show some blowjobs, so they're not, you know, so that, you know, you cool. can't go back, you can't go back. But it's, I mean, it's the fact that the you know, here it looks like the human body and the sexual relationship is celebrated. And it's celebrated yeah. so much that we're going to make it in pottery and put it in our homes. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it's just, it's a lovely article. And maybe some of that pottery is used. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, and I mean, they all look functional. I mean, they look, you know. It, but it, you know. It, the, uh, mm -hmm. they're, uh, the, the ceramics are over 1,500 years old. They, That's uh, amazing. They, yeah, that, it, that they're still good. Um, yeah. They sculpted tens of thousands of ceramics, uh, an estimated of 100,000 of which remain. Where did um, they find it? It's in Peru. But where? Uh, did let's they see. Find it? Gonna, was it like in a? Well, they they, they, they keep unearthing. Or? They keep unearthing uh, in different places. Uh, they've got it like now, that. like in a museum yeah. thing, don't they? Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, uh, of all this pottery, at least if you have five hundred or pots depi depicting sexual acts, and they have all of this stuff in in a separate room, and people are still like shy about asking about it. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. course, but it's just it's wonderful, wonderful art, and I'm just. You know, and of course, you know, uh, you know the, the folks when they came over that the, the Catholic Church was like crushed a lot of it, but it was That's nice to sad. see that this much has um, yeah. uh, that has uh, <coughs> survived. There's the yeah. word I want. Oh my God, more coffee. There it is. And it just it's it's it's, it's hard to find. You have to ask for it. Uh, you know, they don't have them just straight out, which is fine. You know, yeah. yeah. But it just one of the pots that looks pretty has an enormous penis on it. Other folks are having sex. There's there, it, some of it sculpture, some of it, you know, is is, is, is well, drawing. Drawing. It's just wonderful. Yeah, it, it really. The pictures are pretty neat. <laughs> And we'll have Megan link that article mm -hmm. on the Great Northern Sex Cast Facebook page. But that's a good read. I would highly recommend. Didn't they find like the first dildo in the Sumerian? Oh, there's yeah. I mean, they all over the world. They have found yeah. They, I mean, there, there isn't as I believe, as far as I can tell, there's barely been a civilization where they haven't found an ancient depiction of a phallus <clears> or. Um, but isn't or it the interesting the or... things that are that that last? <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like, you know, like, did they keep their like dildos in like special places so that they didn't get, you know, <laughs> found destroyed? by the mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 What, what, what was the 3000 year old, you know, version of the nightstand? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the naughty drawer. Yeah, the underwear right. drawer 3000 years drawer. ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we had oh, months back, Colleen, and it was another really cool article that you found. Um, very comprehensive, but it was about uh, sites around the world. Um, some are well known, but some have been recently uncovered that were uh, sexual shrines of sorts and sites. There was stuff in India and Italy. There cool. had been one that was buried, yeah. and, and it was you know uh, just fascinating. Built like they had built commercial property around it, and then they went to take out a wall, and they found this whole oh wow you know I mean yeah. remember that Colleen? yeah the whole art because I mean it's everywhere yeah. yeah and you know you try and you know, you. You try and squash people's sexuality. It's just not going to work. It's well, you bad, know what? bad, bad, bad. Why you know what really? You know what yeah. really kind of freaks me out is they is, is Homo sapiens and Neanderthals mm -hmm. actually mated. Yeah. Oh yeah, all of us have a little uh, little uh, Neanderthal. Like, yeah, in us. <laughs> no, no, like they were mm -hmm. they act they mated and 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 had this other mm -hmm. right to because they're we're not the same no, genetic no. line. So it's like. Like, would you consider that like bestiality? You know, like were Neanderthals mm -hmm. as intelligent as the Homo sapiens? Well, probably in a different way. I mean, not, not, I mean, there were probably, I mean, lot, lots of things. You know, live in. You know, I mean, pretty much humans are going to do it with something. And these look like the other humans. I mean, they're really not that much different. Kind of. <laughs> Liz, I wish Close. that people could see Liz's face because she's telling this story and the, the, the air of query is all around her and she's really kind of disturbed. I, I wish I, people could see right now. No, but it just, it, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I really think that the, f the fact that healthy sexuality is buried in our DNA. They're gonna, yeah. They're going to find it. The, yeah. You know, that it's there. <laughs> That it's not, you know, that's just, it's, it's how we evolved. I mean, we had, you know, otherwise we're not going to be existing. You, you do know? realize you're going to keep me b busy on Google tonight, right? I'm going to be looking this shit up right and left. That's oh, yeah, a really good a... question. No, no, no. It, I, I don't know. I look at a Neanderthal and I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't find that hot. You know, <laughs> the, 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 you don't want any of that? They're yeah, like yeah. short and they have that like forehead thing and... 
But I mean, at this point, there's, you know, I mean, now there's 7 billion people on this planet to do it with. You know, there was a lot smaller group of people. <laughs> it's I mean, true. Think about it's it. True. We're, you know, it's true. We're, you know, it's true. But like, <laughs> but it's let's like assume. It's like the end of the it. bar. It's ugly night. You I know. know but it's almost beer done. goggles. <laughs> it's almost done. You've eaten a fermented fruit that's fallen down. You don't know. Uh, and the guy I in the corner know. is like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I mean, their brains were smaller. I but mean, maybe they had big dicks. You don't know these things. Uh, it could, yeah. Well, they would know that. Yeah, they would. Because yeah. I think the but part would still be there, right? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think that the couture was in it quite yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm just having. Oh, okay. okay no, speaking no. of other um, sort of uh, Darwin-esque sort of news, um, I thought this was amazing. Okay, so spider bondage, right? Um, there, this is the New York. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> this was in the New York Times, um, and again, we'll have a link to it. I couldn't watch the video because I am so severely arachnophobic. I saw uh-huh. just enough to go, "Holy shit, that's interesting." What are they ah! using it with? Well. It, male nursery rub spiders is what they're called. They tie up their females with spiders. Oh, this so. is not people. Okay. No, this is actual spiders. Okay. Oh, I thought maybe okay. people were dressing oh, it like spider Oh, I was like, I'm trying to something. envision like a dungeon with like this Ro- weird like rope ropes. thing in the corner. Yeah, yeah, we, somebody's like, doing that we, somewhere. We go right to <laughs> we go right to props. We go yeah. right to props. No, I'm, I'm and I'm in yeah. spiders. I'm yeah. in actual yeah. insect land okay. right now. Okay. Okay. Um, no, but they tie the females up with spider silk before mating. So that they won't be killed and eaten mm. during sex. Yeah, dude, you don't want to look at nature when it comes to sex. One time, my my I always thought that <laughs> that, that uh, mallards mated for life, and my mother in law was like, I don't think so. So I looked it up. Oh, are they sluts? No, but the male ducks are they're not oh, good. They're, they're gang like rape. gang rape and. Oh yeah, and I was like, I can't not, I can't unknow this now. I love mallards. Are you yeah, oh, don't they're, the, they're like, misogynist? yeah, like like they'll gang up on one and they'll like they'll they'll chase her around till t- she's tired, and then they'll all have sex with her and just well, I think awful that was happening stuff. in my backyard with the sparrows because I'm telling you, it was birdie frisky time. I couldn't. They are, I mean, there's two, two or three of them are rumbling around on the ground, and then back up through the arborvitae, and then back down and over here. I mean, it was like, and I am right. I'm like, yeah. four, I am four foot away. They don't care. No. Usually, these little suckers scatter like yeah. crazy. <laughs> this weekend was that warm it was. I mean, and now, I mean, I can tell that must must have been successful because everything in my yard is building nest. Oh, I mean, it, yeah. it, 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 it's mm. picking. They made up. it off. Yeah. It is. I was like, what? I'm like, what is that racket? And yeah. I'm like, oh my god. Animal it, mating, I tell you. Frisky little ba- buggers in my backyard this weekend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, this video, the amount of it that I was able to handle, um, mm-hmm. just, uh, it's pretty, it's kind of fascinating, but it's violent. It's well, very, I mean, very, very violent. If think about it, if if like the f- the male of our species was gonna kill us after sex, wouldn't you then be like, okay, I'll do it, but can you put these handcuffs on first? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like a quick getaway. <laughs> Point taken. <Yeah>. Point taken. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, okay. They got smarter, unlike like the Black Widow. I mean, that's what she does. Well, that, Bitch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only, and and they had to stop the octopus sex a couple weeks ago at the aquarium out out west because they were afraid. That the one octopus would um, cannibalize the other one because the sizes oh. were too different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's their big um, uh, Valentine thing at this aquarium is that they would uh, there's octopus mating, yep. but they couldn't find two. Uh, they couldn't find the right size. The right size. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were they too small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. no, no nookie for the octopus. No, I think his name was Zeus, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Something like that. I just felt oh, poor little dude. I know. Um, so this is okay. There's this next one again. New York Times. I really the New York Times can be as freaky as anything else. I got to tell you, um, this is a dude, and he's an Austrian composer. I swear to God, they all come from Austria. You know, all the big famous ones. Um, and this guy is no. Um, his name is Georg Friedrich Haas. And he is currently 62 years old. But let me make another point in addition to what I'm going to tell you about in this story that's interesting about this dude. Three years ago, he met his now wife on OkCupid. Three years ago, I didn't know what OkCupid was. He's 59, and he's out there getting his Mm. groove on. Interesting. Sends out this message to her, and it says, um, quote, Wow, your profile is great. I am an artist, very successful, probably member of top 10 or 20 in my genre in the world. And he signs off with warm wishes. The only... Deviant part of the message says, I would like to tame you. 
Now this is this is a <laughs> composer, very famous one, very successful, who um, is famous for his what they refer to as his politically charged music, but is in, it is inspired by S and M, mm -hmm. and there's this whole big article about how that worked its way through music and his artistic mm -hmm. process. His wife. Um, is uh, a blogger. She's famous. Um, her blog is called The Perverted Negress. And she's actually a black lady. Um, and so she's got this whole thing. But they go out and tour and talk about this. So if you want to hmm. read more, it's and they talk about Tchaikovsky, how his uh, struggles with homosexuality manifested in his hmm. music. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool, huh? Mm -hmm. there's, yeah. a, there's a really good documentary on Netflix, <clears throat> speaking of Germans and Austrians. Yeah, It's called In the Basement. Okay. And it's all subtitled. But it basically is a documentary, and it interviews all these people with really weird basements. <laughs> okay. 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 So, like, one guy <laughs> is a tuba player whose basement is full of Nazi paraphernalia, right? And then, so that's, like, the first guy. And then you're like, okay. And then they have this other guy, this couple that has, like, this weird, like, bar in their basement. You know, it's just in, like, a normal basement. And then they go to the S&M couple. And their basement. <laughs> and they have a few of those. Like, and then the rest of the documentary is like that one. And then there's this other lady and her whatever. And yeah. I just realized I don't think the link that I tried to send sent because it probably would have shown up. They actually have like an Airbnb site so that you can swap sex dungeons. Oh. Yes. Yes, we've talked about that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Never, yeah, for sure. I mean, I knew Do they call that air D&D? &D? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, I think so. It is something like that, Liz. It's something clever. I can't remember. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, is that familiar? Because it came across again and I'm, I'm you know, and I'm poking around. Uh, I've been uh, not sleeping well. Cat's not doing well. You know, if you're a pet owner, you know that. Oh, yeah. So you spend a lot of time, you know, searching through stuff. And, I'm just, and, and this was just, it, it's like really grown. I mean, you know, it's like all these people can contact each other and and, yeah. and you know, like, okay, well, I'm bored with my sex dungeon. Let's see what their sex dungeon is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and it's like, well, you know, you, you, you invest a lot in it. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, you, you know, there's only so much you can do, you know, once you've, you know, once you've hooked, you know, hooked those anchors in, you don't want to put, you know, more holes in the walls and stuff like that. So just go see what Well, it, equipment's expensive, too. Yeah. I mean, it, wouldn't it be much better stuff. to, like, uh, rent something than actually go out and buy a, mm. you know, spend a c 10 grand on a new whatever? Yeah. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, you guys, so um, it's funny. I, I noted this story because we talk about body image on the show, and lo and behold, it's already been mentioned here without any prompting <laughs> from me, which I think is interesting. This is an honorable mention story today. Um, it's a dude. He's a graphic artist um, and a photographer who responds to narcissistic requests for his excellent photo retouching skills. He'll do it, but then he also makes another version that's absurd and puts it on his own Twitter account. Oh. So if somebody thinks that there's one of like a butt that he makes just look really big and she had asked to make it look smaller mm -hmm. type of thing. And it's just funny. And he's like, whatever. Like he, he thinks it's his preposterous. I, I tell you, when I found out that like stars were like retouching their like personal pictures like, you know, like Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. will take a quote unquote selfie uh -huh. and it's photoshopped. Like I was like, wow, I'm OK. I mean, I knew not to believe magazines because, you know, something that is professionally created is going to be photoshopped. But the fact that they photoshop their own pictures they take on their like iPhones, like well, there's nothing. I mean, it, 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 they're. It's part of their job. I mean, it's sort of I like, get I get that. I but mean, it like it completely I mean, just. I mean, what you, can you believe when it comes to pictures yeah, these days? No, nothing. I mean, because I mean, even even how clothing fits. Because I mean, they will go. I mean, they might buy. I mean, uh, they might buy a t. Let's say that someone got a uh, a gig supporting uh, Old Navy. I mean, it's inexpensive, but someone paid them enough money. They will take an Old Navy shirt and they will bring it somewhere and they will tailor it to fit them. Mm -hmm. yeah. and they will spend three times as much to tailor something because mm -hmm. they can. So that it looks a certain way on their bodies. Yeah. No one's gonna tailor an old navy shirt, except for you know, unless unless your image, unless your job is your image. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. I can't even imagine how difficult that is. But how, yeah. how can anyone think that any of that is mm -hmm. reality for themselves when they have mm -hmm. to work? Mm -hmm. They have to go to school. They have to like have kids to raise without like ten nannies. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just how the how people didn't immediately look at this when this when this crap started. You know, and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't look at an image and immediately know that it's fake. 
I mean, yeah. Yeah, versus I want to. Uh, why don't I look like that? I mean, yeah. Well, I, I keep telling all my lingerie companies, I'm like, okay, they have box stuff and the picture's important. I'm like, okay, but if you do a plus size line, please use somebody who is plus size. Yeah. And don't Photoshop her. Like, mm-hmm. leave the roles because you need to like prove that that somebody of any size with any body shape can look good in your outfit Mm -hmm. or i mean you have to if somebody is buying lingerie and plus size chances are they are happy with yeah i mean yeah if if you're going there (laughs) you're going to be fine with it i know that i mean there is people that find roles hot you know Mm -hmm. i mean uh, we in america we don't think that that exists but there there are plenty of them you know yeah i mean we're all you know very very few of us are you know are that small and when I go out and I'm going shopping, you know, even I, I mean, I, I, I look at something and I'm thinking, well, wait, you know, they make it in this size, but they still haven't tailored it. Yeah, it's for, still short. It's still short. I mean, you know, if, you know? If, if you've got a gut, you know, you can't make it the same size as the other one. And I'm not, and, and unlike some people who get pissed off if plus size clothes cost more, I mean, it's twice as much fabric as a small. But then you go small... into like the plus size section and yeah. it's like moo-moos yeah. and tents and... Don't you think that's improved in the recent years though? Some, some, some somewhat. I somewhat. mean, it's still, it's still hard to find body conscious stuff. And the thing is that, I mean, we're all different shapes too. Yeah. So, I mean, um, i I mean, I might be pretty big, but I but I put it in proportion. Where some people it might go in their ass, or it might just go in their tits, or, or something like that, or it might go into the gut. And you got to work around all that. You know, we're, we're we're all those different sizes, but to but to assume that you know that you that you have to make a a separate line of clothing, that you can't just take one thing, you know, one design and just proportionate for it larger versus uh, designing something completely different. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah I mean, it is. It, I mean, yeah. But I mean, I know what styles of clothing f- look good on my body. So I'm mm-hmm. going to look for that style of clothing, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'm going to find it in my size. You're not going to catch me buying those high in front and low in back shirts. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going to do that. Cause mm-hmm. like, I want to, that's not going to look good on me. Mm-hmm. But if I had, you know, a different body type, I might. And then depending on what size you are, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, I don't know. It seems like it's gotten better. But I think, Liz, to your point, I think it makes a lot of sense to use the model and like what you said, not to Photoshop. But I just thought that was pretty funny because it was bound to happen. And I love it that this guy makes fun. So mm. anyway, mm-hmm. um, really, you know what, you guys, we were running so out of time. There's two more things we got to get to today. Okay. The rest um, of the stuff is kind of discussion stuff we can save for next week. But remember last week, Colleen, when we talked about the... Um, gal that has the pub in uh, in Britain, and she put uh, oh. closed circuit camera cameras to tape all the people having sex in her parking lot. And mm-hmm. She's threatening to put it on YouTube if people don't <laughs> knock it off. Mm-hmm. She just had it, you know, and and mm-hmm. and like leaving, you know, men condoms pass- and well, and their undershorts oh. and just really just rude Gross. things. Like, she's a mom, you know. It was bumming her out. What? I, yeah, I just don't understand why people. I mean, the thing is, is that she's gonna get. It's like it's like it's her fault that people are being yeah. assholes on her property, yeah. right? And that's what drives me insane. Yeah. There, no. Well, in in another part of Britain, um, a couple that lives across from a park, they're sick and tired of of people fucking in their front yard. So they too have put up uh, closed circuit surveillance surveillance cameras, and they're not even being polite enough to give anybody a warning. They're just uploading that shit. Yeah. So it's going straight up. Uh, nice. on, mm-hmm. on YouTube, nice. hoping that they're going to get people uh, to knock it off, which I think is perfect. And I mean, because what do they have to lose? You yeah. know, they can't really. No, get... it's their property. <laughs> and if yeah. they want to have a camera showing the uh, wildlife and the birdies in their yeah. front yard mm-hmm. um, uh, on, a, on a streaming and you happen to wander in there. I have yeah. a friend that lives in North Minneapolis and has quite a lot of he lives across from a park and has surveillance cameras and he posts on Facebook like the idiots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Usually uh, it's not sex though, but mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine too. Mm-hmm. Um guys, this is really interesting and it's kind of time sensitive, so I wanted to get it in here. Um the first ever uterus transplant has taken place okay. in the I think United I heard States. about that. Did you hear about mm-hmm. this? I think I did, yeah. Um, they've done it over, I believe, in Sweden uh, before. 
Um, but anyway, the first one was here. It took nine hours to do, and the gal was tw- is 26 years old. That's and awesome. Yeah. And so let's see if it makes a baby, huh? Yeah. It came. It did come from a deceased organ donor, um, and she's got to have about a year of recovery time, and then she has to take uh, re- anti-rejection drugs you know, mm-hmm. during that time. And then um, she's already had her eggs removed, fertilized, and frozen. So cool. then she mm-hmm. has to go back and do yeah in vitro um and so yeah I, I thought that was pretty interesting and again this has been done abroad and um they talked about there's a quote it said it's it's um another route for family building for women who are born without uteri mm-hmm. or those who've had their uterus removed um and then listen to this quote this bummed me out unfortunately some women live in jurisdictions whose governments will not allow the use of the gestational carrier so you uterine transplant may allow these women mm. to have children so you know what difference is it made? I have a, I have someone in my family that was born without a uterus. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was like 18 and hadn't had her period yet. Oh wow. Okay. So they were so that she went to the doctor to find out why and found out she, nothing. Oh my There's god. Nothing there. So. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose if you can get it to work and 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 it ha- has regular menstrual cycles, you would. Um, you know, you would assume that the transplant worked. I'm. She would have done yeah. it. No, no. She yeah. would have. I'm. Really? She, I know she would have done it. Yeah, she. Catholic. She wanted lots of kids, and adoption is really hard. Okay. I well, mean, as sad as it is, as it. I mean, you wouldn't think it'd be that hard, but it is really hard. Yeah. It takes a long time, and there's a. It, oh yeah, and they've even made it more difficult. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know my. You know my my insides were in no baby zone. You know I I built my family through adoption, but it was an insane amount of work. Yeah. And yeah. it just and, and 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 it wasn't cheap. I mean, no. you, you know, and I'm not paying for that, but I mean, just the, the amount of, I mean, I had to go pee in a cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go get fingerprinted. I it's had to, crazy, you know, I it? mean, it was, yeah. anyone can just have a baby. I know. Just, it, <laughs> I know. It is kind of an ironic <laughs> twist, isn't it? Mm. But, you know, I would think, and I mean, I'm not being glib, but like. I would think a lot of people would donate their uterus. Like if you were going to have a hysterectomy or if you decided that you didn't, I mean, like I never, I decided not to have kids. And quite honestly, if, had I realized that this was something out there that they could do, well now. Okay. I don't think they would take it from, you could have serious complications if you, I mean, not yeah, having your uterus, can, it puts you into early menopause, which. No, you need your ovaries for that. You yeah. Yeah. The uterus. The uterus. yeah. You could hand over the uterus. I mean, I would think that that would be something that people would say, you know, I would. Like a kidney, like my, I don't need it, but my sister wants it. So I'm yeah. going to give it to her. I got an extra thing. one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think that this might become a thing. Yeah. I don't know. But congratulations. And I, I, I hope it works. So we'll kind of oh, be yeah. following that story. This show has flown by. <laughs> My it God, is, is. I mean, we didn't even get to like anything outside of the news hardly. Um, so yeah, but there was naked pottery. Well, I mean, come on, <laughs> come on. Well, and then we had That's to, right. we had to have this big wonder, wonder about the Neanderthals and the, <laughs> and the uh, Homo sapiens, which is really going to bug me for the rest of the day. We, we can't wander off into you know a yeah, hundred thousand year old you know humanoid sex. I mean, where else? Are we what are we supposed to do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And don't forget audible.com or wait, audibletrial.com forward slash social audible uh, trial.com forward slash social and please there's over 180,000 titles to choose from you can get a free book by using that promotional code social after the forward slash okay so you guys great show we'll see you next week thank you sounds great